At this time, uh, I'm going to welcome Greta Henry to come speak. Uh, Lori and I had an opportunity to go see their ministry, and I would strongly encourage anyone who would like to go see it to just get a hold of her. Um, it is an impressive thing, and I don't want to steal a lot of your thunder, but um, I'll, I'll tell you what, it's a passion of my wife, it's a passion of mine, and I'm going to stop speaking because she's so good at it. So if you would come up, and it's our pleasure to have you. So. Thank you so much for inviting me here. Um, there's many things that go through my mind. Um, first of all, is my mother. And my mother was um, brought up in um, northern Minnesota and, and uh, went to a, a covenant church, was Swedish, and, and it just, just touches my heart. My mom went to be with the Lord about six years ago. Uh, she was 91 years old. But um, she brought me up to know and love Jesus. And I'm just so thankful for my mom and dad both. So that was the first thing. <laughs> but she touches me. So you know how those kind of things are. They just touch us. But anyway, so my name is Greta Henry, and I'm the director of Champagne Ministries. And what that entails is I'm the director of the Pregnancy Resource Center in Champaign plus Mercy's Refuge. It's a residential facility that's built right next to it, and we just, as of Thursday, I believe it was, we just got our occupant permit and the permission for occupants to live there. So it was quite a journey through the city of Champaign, I'll just say that. So we're so thankful for that, though. And um, it is top notch. It's a beautiful place. We'd love to have you come and visit both places. They're great. So, you might wonder, well, what exactly is the Pregnancy Center and what do you do? Well, we've been around since 1986 in Champaign. We rented different um, buildings and so forth, and then in 2007, um, we built a facility at 205 East Wilbur, right behind the Salvation Army, right out there by the mall off of Market Street. So, we're very thankful for that. And, um, you know, God is so faithful. Um, we are, we're not funded by the government whatsoever. Jesus Christ is our provider. He provides for us, and we're so thankful that the pregnancy center is paid for. So we're just thankful we were able to pay that off. God provided it, and so I'm thankful for that. Now, another journey is our mercy refuge, so we're believing that God will provide for that also. So anyway, um, the uh oh, <laughs> you'll see baby bottles out front. We have many different ways of um, fundraising, and this is one way. It's baby bottles, and you can fill it up with loose chains, or you can put dollar bills in it, whatever you'd like, or you can put a check in it, whatever you'd like. <laughs> but this is one of our of our ways of fundraising for the pregnancy center. And you'll see why as I tell you what we actually do. And But anyway, it's just a neat little way to do it. You can do it um, really any time of the year. You can save it. We'll take a baby bottle with money in it any day. So they're out there if, you're, if you'd like to for that. Then we also do have um, other fundraisers. <clears throat> we have something that's coming up that's really special. Um, it's our life annual banquet. We have a banquet every year in September. It'll be September the 15th, and it's at the Hilton Garden Inn. Um, if you have not ever come, I would encourage you to. They're very exciting and fun. It's already been paid for. We'll have a love offering at the end, but underwriters and so forth have already taken care of it. So, but just come. And our speaker this year, we have all different kinds of speakers. This year, we're going to be having Chet McDonald, and he is um, a man that was born with no arms and very little legs. And God has used him in such a mighty way um, on this earth. It's amazing. He's married, has two children, runs businesses, leads worship, you name it. And it's just exciting. So please come if you're interested. You can, um, there's some invitations out there. You can. 
uh, get that or you can call us and just you have to reserve in order to come. But it's the Hilton Garden Inn. We have anywhere from five to 900 people come. So it's a big event. So if you'd like to come and provide and, and um, sponsor us with this, that would be an awesome thing also. So let's get to the reason why we even need money. Let's just talk about what we're even there for. Why are we even in campaign? Well, you know, I think about there's different, definitely different scriptures that come to mind. One of them is, is Psalms 139, um, verse 13 to 16. For thou didst form my inward parts, thou didst leave me in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from thee when I was made in secret. Thine eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in thy book they were all written. The days that were ordained for me, when as yet there were not one of them. And it's just amazing to think about, you know, how we were formed in our mother's womb and how God had a plan for our life. Some babies don't ever get the chance to take their first breath. And um, so we're at the Pregnancy Resource Center. Our actual um, mission statement is we're committed to saving the lives of unborn children by promoting life-affirming options and providing practical experience or assistance while sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ in word and in deed, and to minister restoration to those who've been wounded by the trauma of abortion. So I'll get into some of those things too. Hopefully I won't take too long. I have a way of talking a lot. I've got lots of stories and lots of stuff you can kind of grab hold, but hopefully I can keep it short. But anyway, so what are we there for? We're to help women that their baby is a baby. That they, if they're pregnant, we give them three options. We talk to them about um, they could be a parent, but when you're pregnant, when you're pregnant, you have three options. One is um, to be a parent, one is to do an adoption plan, and one is to have an abortion. So we tell them and talk about all three of those and give them that choice. They have the right to make that decision, and hopefully, um, they'll make a decision of life. That's what we're there for. So let me just share that with you also. Um, in, let's just talk, 19, or in, let's see, in 2015, there were 33 babies' lives saved from abortion that came into the pregnancy center that were wanting to have an abortion. 33 lives, 33 babies' lives that were saved. I just praise God for that. And then this year, they're keeping on, I, I think this is really something. In June, oh, it was July. July, there were six babies live days, six of them. And how do we help them to make that decision? Like I said, we, we talk about those three things with them. But we are so blessed to have um, an ultrasound machine and a nurse on staff. We have several nurses, volunteer nurses and so forth. And they're able to help the women to um, walk through and we do an intake with them to help them to see, um, to see the whole situation. But what the ultrasound does is, as you know, you get to visit your baby in, your, in the womb. So they get to visit their baby before the baby's here. And so um, there's a story I'll tell. In fact, if you come to the banquet, you might hear this one. But this was just here maybe a couple weeks ago. In fact, there was a woman that came in and she had a little baby in a little car seat and then she had another little child and um, she had made a decision she was pregnant she said there is absolutely no way that I can have another child I can't have one and um, so um, she came in for a pregnancy test and uh, they did the ultrasound they couldn't see anything right away so um, they said we'll come back again in a week and so they, she came back to have another ultrasound she was just, just a little early the first time and you can visit your baby in your womb at 6.3 weeks, according to our ultrasound. So the baby's really teeny tiny little thing. And um, anyway, so uh, she came in there and, you know, uh, was laying on the table. I just happened to be one that got to be in there. And so they have to have another person there at, um, in the ultrasound room. You don't just have one, the nurse, you have someone else. And I was the one that happened to be there that time, so I got to go in. So she's laying there, and I knew the woman and stuff, and she's laying there, and um, the nurse put the, the wand on the tummy, and, and I looked at the nurse, and the nurse looked at me. We didn't say, she didn't say anything yet, and I'm thinking, uh-oh, you're kidding. 
And um, then a little couple minutes later, she goes, the nurse says, um, we see two little babies in there. And there were two sacks right there like that. And their little hearts were one. Like that. It was just like, we're like, oh my word. That is just, I mean, something I'm thinking, oh my goodness, sakes alive. I mean, as far as abortion and all that. Well, anyway, um, uh, she uh, got off the table and went and talked to the nurse and stuff, and she said, you know, since there's two, I really can't have an abortion. I thought, we thought, well, praise the Lord Almighty God. You know, he's so good. <laughs> so anyway, um, um, she made a decision to, she's, I mean, she's still up to possibly adopt, but either that or parent, one or the other, will help her because we can help her through our programs that we have. And that will get me on to a couple other things that we do. We have um, what's called the HOPE program. The HOPE program is helping other parents through education. So they come and we have um, volunteers that come. They're called mommy mentors. And they um, actually um, go through different curriculum that we have and videos so that they can see how their baby's growing and how, how to take care of a newborn and delivery and you name it. And they earn mommy bucks. The mommy bucks, then they can purchase things in our one hope room, which is anything from diapers to um, cribs. Those are brand new. And so um, those are funded again by different churches and organizations. And so, you know, we just, in some churches, even have like a, have like a little um, baby shower for the hope room, which is kind of neat too. Anyway, so that's how they receive their stuff, and then they get loved on. They get they have prayer time. It's just a precious time, and so that's just another thing that we do. And then also, like I was saying with her, I mean, it's still a possibility she could do an adoption plan. But let me tell you another story. Two years ago, actually, two years ago, almost to the day again, um, we had a uh, a woman come in, and almost the same typical same thing happened. She wasn't going. She was going to have an abortion. She had other children, and then there were twins. She made a decision to do an adoption plan, and it was with a family that um, down in Southern Illinois, a pastor and his wife that had been praying and longing for children, and they have two little girls now that are going to be two years old because she went into labor the day, the night of the banquet. And so that next day, I was at the hospital, and we were so forth. Because I didn't say in there that I'm also the adoption director, and so I have the privilege and honor of helping these precious birth moms walk through this um, this thing in their life that has happened. And they are is what I can always call them. They're heroes. And as we know, we know little Kenilyn is just so precious little girl. Oh my goodness. And when I think about her birth mom and how the sacrifice that, that she gave so that Kenilyn could have a life that, that she knew that she couldn't. And it's just awesome to just um, be part of that. And I'm so privileged to be able to help women walk through adoption plans too. And so if you think about it, we do have one of uh, Oh, excuse me, a woman right now that is um, considering an adoption plan. And um, I'll be meeting with her tomorrow. So if you think of it, just put a prayer up to the Lord for me. That would be great. And uh, anyway, so we have those continually. And I didn't also state that the Pregnancy Center is Living Alternatives. And we started, like I said, in 1986 here in Champaign, or in Champaign, but we have 11 different centers throughout all of Illinois, and two of those of the 11 are in Indiana. And um, so we touch many different areas. The president was the one that um, started this back in, oh, he was, it was even before that, 1983, I believe it was. He started this, these pregnancy centers, and then they expanded. He's on, he's now off with the Lord. He, um, um, passed away last year, but we are, you know, continuing and we have, you know, just great people in authority and we're just so thankful for the living alternatives. And anyway, so um, I will say that um, with, uh, with all of that to say, there's many lives that are saved throughout all of the 
um, 11 centers. And um, many adoptions also do take place throughout the different centers, too. So it's just exciting to see how God does save his precious little ones. I'm so thankful for that. And I'm thankful to be able to be part of it. Also, what we have, um, we have just Bible studies, too, for the women and discipleship and so forth. And then we also do have a very um, precious part of the ministry is for those that have had an abortion before. It's called Deeper Still, and um, it's, uh, it helps uh, women, like, it's, like it says here, um, you have an uh, abortion-wounded heart. Um, and, you know, like, you might know somebody or you might be part of it, but it's always a secret thing. It seems like that sometimes women are willing to deal with it right away, but sometimes it's not until you're very old, elderly, and we've had women come to the Deeper Still um, from teenage all the way to 73. And um, it's amazing what God does to restore healing and um, uh, just restoration because Jesus loves you and He has forgiven you and He wants to help you walk through freedom. And um, it's not the unforgivable sin. And so we want to help you as you walk through that. So if you're interested, I've got information on that. You can. Um, if you know anybody, a lot of times people, we know people that have had it, that you know that they're struggling with different kinds of grief or sadness or regret, alcohol, drug abuse, just emotionally numb nightmares about the abortion, all those things. So if you're interested, there's going to be um, uh, there's two retreats every year, and this one will be in o October 14th to the 16th. So it's coming up. You can apply online or have an application out there, too. Because we want to get all. We care. Jesus cares so much about all. He cares so much about each and every person that um, is on this earth. And he wants to, to um, um, be a part of freedom and restoration. So that brings us to another um, part here. We, uh, we're kind of busy at the pregnancy center. Let's <laughs> tell this day the least. Um, anyway, uh, we're so thankful that we're able also to share Jesus. That was just a great testimony that you had about going on um, out on um, mission trips. That's awesome. And I'm just so thankful that there's a, another mission place right in Champaign, too. It's really neat for women, and we're so thankful for men and women, fathers and mothers. But this last year, in 2015, there were 54 people that gave their heart to Jesus. In Champaign. I mean, I'm just so thankful for that. And then also, there have been already, I believe, 16 that have this year so far. So we're just, we continue on to share the gospel, and um, we're just thankful for that. We're just, we just praise the Lord. We praise Him for um, the opportunity to let, um, let Himself be known. And then I also mentioned to you about Mercy's Refuge. Mercy's Refuge is a residential facility. And it's designed to assist women as they walk through um, the journey from brokenness to wholeness. Actually, um, we have proven methods. There's many programs that, we are, that are proven, professional counselors, and just a desire for women to find freedom in their life-controlling issues. And I always say that it's like a woman and like people that would have like, um, oh, I'd say like, they feel like ashes that they're all used up that they don't feel like there's much hope for them. But God has a plan for their life, and He's wanting to help restore to them what the enemy has stolen. And so this um, Mercy's Refuge, you're going to be seeing that advertised more and more. You've probably heard about it, but it's, been a, it's actually, we've already hired the people. There's four people already hired, and three of them will be moving in. And then we've already, we haven't even put it out there for people to do applications or come in and be free, but we've had constant women already calling and wanting to come. I've got to come. I need to be there. Help me. I want to come. And it's just awesome to see what God's done. And um, 
I will say this, that, you know, Mercy's Refuge has been a dream and, and something in my heart for years, probably the last 30 years. I've been the director since 2001 for the Pregnancy Center, so that's been 15 years. So um, before that even, um, I was on the prayer chain for the Pregnancy Center, but the Lord has always put it in my heart for, for broken women, for women that um, are homeless, women that, you know, need a place, need to be loved on. And so we, I was always kind of that kind of person that always would, would have women come and, and um, they would uh, come and actually come and stay at our home. And we can't do that anymore, so that is part, part of my uh, job. They are not allowing me to have people come and live in my home anymore. So anyway, we have a home now. So we're very thankful for that, very thankful. So, you know, please come and... And uh, we'll be having an open house for that probably towards the end of the, like November or something. And just please and stop by any time. We'd be glad to show you um, what God's doing in Champaign. We're very thankful for that. Let me, let me just, before I do a, a, a little um, presentation, I want to tell you one more story. This is a story about a woman who came in and she was raped. She was actually raped. And um, she ended up. Um, coming in and she says, I can't have an abortion, but I need to do an adoption plan. I said, okay. Well, it just so happened that one of my bosses had said, you know, there's a family from Australia that needs to um, actually have, um, or, or actually is wanting to um, adopt another child. And so I just mentioned that to the woman. Well, she came back the next week and she said, I want that family from Australia. I said, okay, well, we'll work on that. And so um, we ended up, um, um, she ended up having the baby. It was quite something else to have the people from Australia come. It was really something else. But anyway, she ended up doing that, and they moved back their pastors in Australia. Ended up moving back, brought little, the little baby back with them. And um, I, I get updates every once in a while. Well, he's nine years old now. And what he loves to do is he loves to preach. And he is now, he loves to preach. And so his daddy's letting him preach a little bit. Well, he preached one Sunday night, and there was a family there, a grandma from America that had come to see her grandchildren. And she gave an altar call, and she went forward. And he came to, and she came to know the Lord Jesus that night. Is that not something or what? I'll tell you. It seems like, is that made up? No. It's a truth. It's like, oh my goodness. You know, God is so good. He's so faithful. And he, he takes stuff that we would never dream and turns it around for his glory. And his little birthday wish was, well, my dad said on my birthday, I could do another night of service. I could do it. He says, I love to do you know, stuff on the, on, you know, computer and all that kind of stuff. I love to do that. And they say, boy, you're really good at that. He's so good and he's nine. So who knows what God has in store for him. So I'm just thankful for that. But anyway, I'm going to end with this. I want to end with a, a, a very precious um, story or a little um, demonstration. And it's just to demonstrate that about every 30 seconds of abortion is happening in the United States of America. And it's pretty sad um, to think about that. Uh, it's been over 58 million babies that have been um, have been uh, aborted since 1973, since the Roe versus Wade. And um, it's just uh, just a saddened um, thing to think about. But you know what? There were six in July that weren't. Thank you, Lord. You know, I mean, there were 33 last year. You know, I'm just so thankful that God hears our prayers, and we have this ministry that is able to be here in Champaign and all of the surrounding areas, too, to be able to um, actually, um, kind of, sorry, I'm not going to kind of say, but I'm okay. Um, I want you all, if you can this, please, I want this, and there won't be much talking after this because it's very sobering. So, but I would like for all of you to please um, just, um, after I finish talking for a second, I'd like you to please close your eyes and um, just hear this. Now, in it, um, I have little BBs, and you'll hear those BBs. Each BB is representing 10,000 lives that have been killed from different wars that we've had in our nation. 
And every life has been precious, every single one of them in all the different wars. Um, and uh, I just, I'm going to name the different wars and I'll into the babies into this um, into this uh, bucket here, and you'll hear that. But just um, just remember and just think about that and pray for us and um, pray that we will even be able to reach more women that are abortion-minded, be able to go out and help more women make adoption plans, come, more that would come out and come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So anyway, if you wouldn't mind just shutting your eyes, and I'll, I'll go from here. The American Revolution. The Civil War. World War II, or World War II. The Korean War. The Vietnam War. 9-11, the War on Terror. The babies that have been killed since Roe vs. Wade in 1973. That is the sobering example of uh, of the lives that have been lost. Wow. Um, I don't really have anything to, to say after that. My goodness. Um, I will say with the, the banquet, um, if you're interested, get with Lori. Uh, Lori is trying to assemble a posse to go, right? So, yep. And then um, Greta also is looking for people who would like to um, give their time to, if, if you ever want to share in a ministry, and if this is close to your heart, what a great one. And uh, I'm sure she'll give you her contact information. Uh, so if you would please rise, and we'll go ahead and uh, close with our, our last praise and worship song. Thank you. 